Hello and welcome to Time to Talk Titanic. Now, as you'll see, or if you're listening to this, as you'll soon hear, there are only two guests on this episode of Time to Talk Titanic. There's me, Aaron, who you're probably sick of hearing by now, but I'm also joined by a guest who, you know, I'd now refer to as a friend. You know, I've gotten to know him over a period of time and I'm honoured and humbled that he was willing and, you know, quite excited to come on to the podcast today, um, Steve Hall, who, if you're unaware, is somewhat of a prolific author and historian who is on the cover of many books when it comes to Titanic. His most recent one, if I'm not wrong, is Titanic in Photographs, um, which is a, a, an excellent book. I've, I've not read it yet, but a couple of the co-hosts have. And we've discussed it. I've seen, I have seen many posts about it online. Uh, it just looks absolutely incredible. Um, I have a stack of books that I need to get through. I'm quite lazy. I get distracted. I procrastinate. I don't read. I'll hold my hands up. So I'm not going to sit here and be like, I've read it. It was amazing. I'd be lying. Um, but yeah, Steve Hall is everywhere when it comes to Titanic literature. And I'm yeah, just absolutely honoured to be speaking to him today and very excited to speak about what we will be discussing in this episode, which you'll have clicked on this, you'll have seen from the title, the thumbnail, that we are discussing the switch theory. How controversial. Now, in the last month or two, this has just erupted into a furor of, yeah, I, I'm actually shocked as someone you know, who's into Titanic in the modern age. You know, I'm 27 years old. I've seen it all. I was nine years old when YouTube first began. And, you know, I was so excited because I was able to suddenly watch, you know, very crap quality versions of My Heart Will Go On and snippets from the 1997 film um, on this new website that could just post clips of whatever it wanted. It was the Wild West of the internet. And then Facebook began. And, you know, I didn't use it in the group sense that it's now become, you know, very good for. I think that's what Facebook is now best for, is groups and pages. Um, but I, I'm amazed that in 2023, TikTok has now become a hotbed of Titanic conspiracy discussion. I, I just think that's incredible. Um it, it's awesome that Titanic still draws so much attention in this day and age, but it's also quite worrying because attention spans are getting shorter and people will watch a, a short video that seems convincing because it has compelling evidence, but they won't then go and do their own independent research. And that is why today I'm speaking with Steve and hopefully people will find this video and it will be circulated and it will just help to set the record straight. And I will now hand it over to Steve. Uh, Steve, how are you doing? I'm doing well, Aaron. Let's do, it's, I think, what time is it here? It's 10.30 uh, in Sunday morning, so it's, it's quite early. Um, is, yeah. So my voice hasn't quite woke up yet, and um, but um, I'm 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 going well. How are you over there in uh, in Scotland? I'm good. Yeah. So it's ten thirty a.m. for you on Sunday morning, and it's eleven thirty p.m. for me on Saturday evening. So as you're watching this episode, however long it goes for, you might notice Steve's energy levels going up and and mine depleting. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> But that that explains it, you know, we're on different sides of the world, but, the, you know, this was totally worth, it's not even like I've stayed up, you know, I, I'd be up at this time anyway, it's just, I've got something great to be doing at this time, when normally I'd be sitting, you know, scrolling on aforementioned social media, so, but yeah, I'm good, I'm good, and yeah, great to have you on. Ah, that's very good then, so, yeah, so this morning, this evening, or where everyone is listening, around the world. I mean, we, we, we're coming to the Titanic switch theory. Um, and most people know about it, don't they, really? Um, so as you're saying, it's quite popular on TikTok. I don't uh, don't have a TikTok account. I, I, I think 
their little sort of little snippets that go for about 30 seconds or something like that and gain some popularity. Um, and there's a lot of um, YouTube videos on it. And of course, there's um, two, three books, four books maybe, which had been brought out, which were saying the Titanic was switched with Olympic. I, I'm, I'm, I think there's really only probably three books by the same author. Um, which had put the theory forward. The first one in 95, um, The Riddle of the Titanic. And then there was a, a follow-up book to that, um, Titanic, The Ship That Never Sank. And then there was another one after that, um, The Titanic Conspiracy. And the, the first one, which came out in 1995, and um, I have to admit, um, I did buy it. Um, I was intrigued by it. I thought it was a good read. Uh, it was hardcover. And um, I had no idea where the book was, was, was going. Um, I was going to talk about oh, this um, thought that one ship's damaged and so we'll switch it over and whatever. But it slowly evolved in the first book as I was reading along. And it sparked me to think to myself, well, could that really have been done? Um, so... Everyone who's watching him basically, you know, knows with, you know, Titanic and Olympic and their timeline. So, you know, you've got Olympic, which was finished and, and left Belfast in, uh, when was it, in, in May, um, the same day that Titanic was, was launched. Um, and it done really, uh, really well for a few crossings. And then it was involved in an incident um, with a naval cruiser, um, H H. HMS Hawk. Yeah, I was thinking HMAS because I'm Australian, so I'm going to put the A in there, HMAS Hawk. And it was in the Solent. There's a collision. Whose fault it was? Who knows whose fault it was? So the two ships come together. And at that time, ships um, uh, like the Hawk had a bow ram on the front of it, which is made out of steel or made of steel and full of concrete. I don't really know. The general idea was in a conflict if you're losing. I mean, you can turn your ship around and then you can just ram the other one and, and basically disembowel it. Um, and this collision happened um, and um, Hawk hit Olympic and um, just below the stern mask and went straight in, done severe damage. And this is where the theory starts off that the Olympic was um, severely damaged, bent keel, all this type of stuff. Um, and then the, the theory develops on from that point of view that it goes back to Southampton and it gets patched up. And then it goes back to, um, it's got to go back to Belfast. It's Belfast has got the only dry dock to take an Olympic class ship. Um, and, and it's there for six weeks and um, all the work that gets involved in it. And that's where the, that's where the thought of a switch actually has its genesis. It's at that point where you think to yourself, here's Titanic, exactly the same. Here's the Olympic. Uh, it's, it's, it can't be fixed. Uh, well, Harlan and Wolf built it. They could fix it. I mean, they could have cut the Olympic in, into two pieces, fixed the piece and put it back together again. But the damage was done at the stern at the back. It, it, the hardest thing to fix with the Olympic really is that you didn't have much room to move in the dry dock and you had to pull all the plates off and you had to do a lot of things six weeks. It's probably a fair thing. And then the conspiracy theory is once the Olympic left, I mean, it's the the the, uh, the keel's bent, it can't go at its normal speed and they come up with the thought, well, all right, then when Titanic's finished, we'll swap them over and make Olympic um, the Titanic. Titanic then becomes the Olympic and then we'll take it out and we'll sink it and claim the insurance money. That doesn't make much sense to me, really. Um, no. If when you, when you go back and you start looking, where you've got to look for how could it have been done? Because we we'll all put our hands up and say, oh, look how ridiculous. You know, we've got all the all the men at Harlan and Wolf. Um, they would have seen what was going on. I mean, you lived anywhere in Belfast and you would look over towards the direction of the shipyard and you can see these huge ships. 
I mean, they're switching them around. I mean, you would know something about that. So I think you've got to look for any evidence before you can jump to any any thought that could they have done it. Um, and there's really no evidence at all that they could have done it. Um, so have I ever found anything to, to, to justify in my mind thinking they could have done it? Well, there's nothing there. When we, when we start looking at the photos, that, that's where you've got to start. Now, we had the um, fellow who was um, engaged by um, Hart and Wolf to, to take photos around the yard, it's, uh, Robert J. Welsh. And, um, so, and, he, and he took a lot of photos of, of the Olympic because it was the first one. And he didn't take as many photos of the Titanic. Yeah, look, that makes sense, but it doesn't make any sense to me. I'm, I'm not playing good cop or bad cop here. I don't understand why Robert Welsh didn't go down and take just as many photos of the Titanic during its construction. I mean, if uh, Lord Perry or Alan Wolf are paying him money for photos, you just go and take photos. And if you're going to make Titanic a little bit different, well, then let's take more photos of it. I suspect, and it's only my opinion, why why did uh, Welsh, 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 why did he not take a lot of photographs of Titanic. I suspect he was doing something else, in my opinion. Um, he committed a lot of time to take the photographs of the Olympic during construction, and I think he was off doing other things. He might have been on holidays um, at certain times during the construction of the, the Titanic. We never know. And we also don't know because, I mean, during the Second World War, um, Harlan and Wolf in Belfast was bombed. And we know that... Um, um, there was a lot of damage done by the, the Luftwaffe um, at that time. And uh, apparently a lot of records were lost. This was in 42, say 43. You can understand that the, the, the Germans would uh, would like to bomb the shipyard since Harlan and Wolf were making boats. <laughs> so, mm. and then again, I think there was an explosion in the yard also by the IRA back in the 60s or 70s where more damage was done. So were there any extra photos? I don't know, and I, whatever. So we're left only with what we can compare. So when we look at Olympic, we look at Titanic, then you can find the differences between them, can't you? You know them, Harry. I mean, they're pretty easy to pick. They're very obvious, very apparent, um, to the point where actually I've been in exhibits and museums that are explicitly Titanic exhibits and museums, and they yeah. will have photos of Olympic on display or projected on a wall, but it's labelled as Titanic because most people coming in won't know the difference, but yeah. people who know these ships and, you know, some people won't even know that there were three Olympic-class liners because when they watch the James Cameron film, because, again, that's how most people are even aware of Titanic, um, there, there's no mention of Olympic. There's no mention that there were two other mm -hmm. ships or you know it's just it's titanic you know and mortania is mentioned and that's it um yes. a lot of people will know lusitania because of the 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 war you know that's it's it was a bit a big thing um there was the the propaganda posters of avenge the lusitania um but yeah so in the kind of the james cameron cinematic universe there's titanic mortania and mm -hmm. avatar like you know, and that and that's it. There's no Olympic. There's no Lusitania. It's just these two ships, and there's no yeah. context. But yeah. but yeah, completely. For someone that knows these ships and knows the differences, you know what to look for. But oh, yes, there is the the claim that, and it's referenced on the. The port side of the bow, the the forecastle. Um, so you know, for people listening or or watching, if you're kind of like, oh, what's the forecastle? So you look at the ship side on, and a lot of it's black. Below the waterline, it's kind of reddish pink. Um, but above the black, you've got a gold or yellow kind of band, and then it becomes white, and that's the superstructure. So the first. Yeah, yeah, at the very front of the ship, the first section that's white is sea deck, and that's the forecastle. 
Yeah. Now you've got some little windows, little circle windows that are called portholes. And on the Olympic, these were shown in the the arrow gantry that the first five portholes kind of, you know, not to the front of the ship, but kind of back towards the well deck, the, the forward well deck, were the, the first five portholes were two close together, one separate, and two very close together. And then all of a sudden, I'm doing, you know, inverted commas, quote unquote, all of a sudden, oh, um, yeah. the the Titanic um, set sail, which had five very separate portholes at that section, all of a sudden set sail with portholes two close together, one separate, two very close together. So all of a sudden, the Titanic's forward well deck portholes look the exact same as the Olympics did. Yeah, so the so, so this is the popular, the popular yes, one is I believe that yeah. the uh, people that it, it comes up quite often is going to say, well, well, they just what they usually say is, oh, well, the you know portholes or arrangements were different between Olympic and Titanic, but as both went down the slipway, they were exactly the same. So we're talking about where we're talking about is on the port side right at the very front and and so therefore then the number is 14 there was 14 of them on both of them um, at the time that they were launched and later on you you start looking at photos and you think well here's titanic that's got two extra ones so now it's got 16. so it's got a little grouping of two very close together because they changed something inside. I think put a kitchen area or something and they put a skylight and they had a, um, a, a vent at it. And, and then people look at it and say, well, it's got 16. And then all of a sudden, oh, well, I mean, Olympics only got 14, but oh, mysteriously now it's got 16. It looks like Titanic. There's nothing mysterious about it. I mean, because when um, Olympic went back um, after the Hawk collision, um September October um it got the extra two there was nothing mysterious about it so really in the end they both end up having 16 in exactly the same place so from a conspiracy point of view that all gets cancelled out so you, you can't say oh portholes you know oh they've changed it and they've added it I mean that'd be a lot of ridiculous because if you wanted to switch the ships what are you going to do I mean who's going to notice the portholes anyway but what are you going to do blank them off and you're just not going to go there. We're well, not going to do it on a way over a weekend, are you? I mean, it's, poor. it's, it's not going to work. So the porthole thing, really, that's out because the Olympic um, got the same number, the extra two, as what Titanic got. So that cancels that thought of, of switching the ships out. So then you've got to start thinking to yourself, well, what other evidence is there? Now, one of the popular ones which comes up is like, well, on the wreck today of the Titanic, uh, you can see white paint, which is on the wreck, sort of around the anchor, down the bottom, different areas. You can see how the the upper um, or the, the last few coats of paint which went on, which was black, but underneath it, it appears to be, oh, look, it's white. Well, oh, Titanic was never painted white, but we know Olympic was painted white. Uh, for her launch. So they, they use that as an excuse to turn around and say, oh, hang on a sec, look, there it is. Now, do can I explain why there's places on the wreck where you can see sort of like white paint on it? Can I, I've never really looked at why it looks white. It could be an artifact um, from the light, um, from the submersibles. It could be an artifact that, that maybe the paint just fades Maybe in the end, in those areas there, they had some white paint, so they just put it on during outfitting. They just painted on, da 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 da, whatever it was, and it's starting to come off. I think people could use that one as as, as a bit of a bit of a well, I can win on that white paint one. Um, I, th I think that's one that they could use. The, the sixteen portholes on the forecastle on sea deck that's that's a non-starter. And then, then it's got you've got to move it on to all the other things that we know that look completely different. It was an evolution of the Olympic class, the Titanic, because they started changing things around. 
you know, because on on the Olympic, on the on the wheelhouse, it was like round, I think, the you know, sort of. Uh, and why they made it round, I, I don't really know. And they had a hell of a lot of room at the back there because the chart room wasn't at the back of the wheelhouse or the pilot pilots pilots accommodation. Um, they were, I think the chart room on the Olympic was on the on the port side. Um, a couple of the officers' quarters were around slightly differently. The Marconi room was not in the same place on as it is on on Titanic. They moved it so it was more in the centre or something like that. So can you look at that and turn around? Well, well, there's no. We've got photos of the round um, front on the wheelhouse on the Olympic. We can see it on maybe one photo of Titanic with Captain Smith there with Titanic. It's it's got a flat front. Can you use that for any type of evidence? Well, well, you'd have to show me a photo that Olympic got the flat front um, at the same time that Titanic had it. Mm -hmm. And it, it's not true. It, it, it wasn't there. I mean, you can't go around pulling the whole front off a wheelhouse because it's round, make it flat, and then, oh, well, I'll plug up plug, plug holes and I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. You know, I mean, geez, this switch was supposed to happen, what, over one weekend? It was supposed to be so easy, wasn't it? Well, we don't have to change anything. All we've got to do is what change change the plates on the uh, on the lifeboat. You know, we're just going to screw it off, and we're going to. It's got um, it's going to have it's got uh, SS Titanic and then SS Olympic, and then over the weekend we'll just un unscrew it and pop it all on. And I think that one of one of the one of the Titanic's lifeboats, I think number five, had had five on one side and three on the other side. Which was, was something which I picked up anyway, but there was there's, there's and there's another one. People saying, "Oh well, you know, there was this, the the scouts or something. They had um, a, a lifeboat and it, it had carved into an Olympic, and it was supposedly picked up by the Carpathia. I don't know whether you read that one or not. No, I've not. That? No, I've not come across that. No, yeah, no. Well, see, see, this is one. Apparently, it was in the uh, after the the Great War or something. Apparently. Uh, for the part for the contribution, um, um, they um, contributed um, a large lifeboat to the Sea Scouts um, in England. I can't remember exactly where it was, and there's pictures of it, and it does look like uh, the size of a lifeboat, which would have been on the Olympic class at the time. And they were saying that scratched into into the side of the into it was was Olympic. And they said it came from Titanic. But then again, I can't find anything about that. And that doesn't hold up. Mm. It's just whatever. So so when we, we've got to start looking at all the photos and that. And this is before you even get to who 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 knew. And when you're going to switch all these things around, so we're going to keep the 15,000 people quiet yeah. and their wives. I mean, that's impossible for a start. You're switching it around. Then you're going to keep this certain crew would have to know about how you're going to keep them quiet. You know, it's the board of trade, they would have known it was what, how you're going to, oh, what's it? And this list the port because it, it, it had a bent curl. What's the bent curl got to do with a ship that's got a list of port? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Olympic had a list of port also when it was going out, really. I mean, usually you think yourself, everyone was on the port side when it was leaving because they were waiting to everyone. I don't know what they were doing. I've got no idea. I, I so feel like the, yeah the the thing that's missing from because I actually I'll hold my hands up I wasn't aware of the switch theory until kind of early 2020 I had never heard of it um yeah. I you know I kind of mentioned at the beginning of this episode you know that that Facebook is very good for kind of groups and pages you know it specifically for me i i only use facebook now for titanic groups and titanic pages um and it was during lockdown 2020 that i started engaging with titanic groups you know i started my titanic artist instagram i started sharing myself on, on facebook and i was like oh there's a lot of people like me that are obsessed with a thing from 100 years ago great cool um i i didn't know that but then with that came all this information being thrown at you that I just I just didn't know. I, you know, the Californian incident, I didn't know about that until 2020. The Olympic switch, 
theory. I didn't know about that until 2020. There were so many things I just was completely unaware of until three years ago. And now I've, I've done so much reading about them that it feels like I've always known about them, but I didn't. Um, and and I'm someone that I would say I probably know more than the the, the average Titanic enthusiast. You know, I, I because I go out of my way to learn a lot with, with my artwork and just you know, out of interest. And, but something that's not brought up in any of these conspiracy articles or videos, because again, I'm now submersing myself into this just out of curiosity and to be able to debunk it. Because to be able to debunk something, you need to know what's being said. Because if you don't know what's being said, you can't fight against it. Uh, you can't come in on top of it. Exactly. But one yeah. thing that's not ever being said is the time scale. So you kind of said, I think flippantly, you said like over a weekend. Um, but you did mention previously, you did say six weeks. And that's important because that is the time scale that this switch would have had to have happened within. So when the collision with the H him, HMS Hawk um yeah, happened. I yeah. I, I was like, I, you know. Well, right, eventually, right, right. eventually right. one of us will be able to say HMS Hawk without nearly slipping up. What you I know, didn't say HMAS was a typical yeah. Australian. <laughs> yeah. Because I mean, it's like uh, uh, RAF and then there's RAAF. It's it's hard hard for me to do, and it's also hard after talking to a few people from America over the last couple of days to stop saying and because there's <laughs> a, 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 a you know, you see, you pick up all these things, then you pick up Scottish words and things, you know. So yep. I don't know. I haven't been it watching them. It Sorry. all just bleeds together. But the the collision between Olympic and the Hawk yes. happened, yep. and Olympic went back to Belfast to be mended. Yes. But there's a photo which yes. exists of Olympic limping back into the dry dock and Titanic's in the foreground of the photograph. And Titanic one funnel. With yeah, one funnel. has one funnel and is a shell of the ship that it will become. Because yeah. it's seven months away from being complete. It's, or yeah. however long. In fact, let me see, because I wrote this down. So, um, yeah. so yeah. So, in the foreground of the photograph is a very, very, very incomplete Titanic. Um, yes. It took, there we go, it took seven months for Olympic to be complete in the first place. So, Based on this photograph of Titanic that we can see where there's one funnel, there's no paint on her, she looks awful. Olympic, as a ship that has sailed five times at this point, is a yeah. completely finished ship. Took seven months to complete. And yeah. we can see her, she's you know coming back from a little collision, and she's she's totally done. But in the foreground, her sister is a wreck because she's not done. You're telling me that in 44 days... They were able yes. to get that ship with one funnel and nothing else done no, no, to, because... to look like the Olympic. It's 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 physically impossible. Like there's no it's way. So the thing is, I think with Aaron, if if you take the, take it from the point of view, you, someone's a conspiracy theorist. So okay, then so the Olympics going back to Belfast, and let's, it's back there in October, whatever it is. At some point. What are they going to say? Somebody's going to say to themselves, Oh, well, let's switch them over. I mean, you had to work out something was wrong with Olympic before you come up with some wheezy idea you're going to switch them over. Mm. You couldn't have switched them over because Titanic was nowhere near completed to be yeah. able to switch it over in six weeks. You could you couldn't you couldn't do it. And not only that, I think they were going to take parts off the um, Titanic to put on the Olympic. Uh, a section of the um, of the uh, drive shaft, tail shaft, or something like that, and a, a few other bits and certain pieces off the one of the uh, port side reciprocating engine. That, but there was a lot of things I'm going to take off it. But you've got to remember too that Titanic also was going progressing slower than what Olympic did because they decided that they wanted to extend out on B deck those staterooms. So what happened is that after Titanic was was launched and they take it to outfitting. All of a sudden, now what they're doing is they're pulling all the windows out of B deck. Mm. So that's going to take you an extra. So if you had to fiddle around for a whole deck again, it's probably going to take you another, what, four weeks, five weeks to put everything out. Then you've got to change the windows around. You've got to put it, you've got to put it back there. So 
maybe the idea of a switch might have come round in October if Olympic had been that badly damaged, but it wasn't. We know it wasn't. We know mm. that they, we know it wasn't from replace the whole plates at the side there and thing. We'll come back to the whole plates and the faded plates and all of those things. So therefore, then if we accept the fact that they decided in October. The Olympics girls bent. We can't do nothing about it, so we'll just jerry rig it up and do this and do that. We'll send it out there, and now we've got Titanic, and we're going to start turning Titanic into an Olympic. Well, in October, Titanic already looked like Olympic. <laughs> you know mm -hmm. what I mean? The windows were already missing anyway. It's, you could have just put them all back. Yeah. So that it falls over. So no switching off in October. So that falls down. So the next window of opportunity is going to be, uh, which is in um, March, isn't it? March. So therefore, then Olympics coming across the Atlantic and then it hits a submerged wreck or something, which they say, and it drops a, um, a, a, a prop blade on the port side. Mm. Now, how do you plan that? <laughs> so it comes back. So then it's got to go back to Belfast and therefore you put it in there and it's not going to be a big job to change it around. Let me come back to October too, because this is one of the things that the conspiracy theorists put forward, that they say that on the wreck, on I think on the starboard blade, um, you can clearly see 401. And, and the conspiracy theorists, they turn around and say, yes, but that was the Titanic's blades which hadn't been fitted, which was put onto the Olympic to expedite the repair. You, you can't, look, the blades were configured slightly differently they were a little bit different a different thrust services and um, dynamics on it and everything if you were going to change if you change if you put titanic's blades on the olympic in uh, october 1911 you had to have changed the ones on the port side too you had to have done the whole lot otherwise it'll be higgledy piggledy all over the place so the 401 on the wreck Instead of saying that that backs up the conspiracy because they say, oh, they put Olympics, the Titanic's blades on Olympics, so that's right. It, it, it's just nonsense. Titanic, the wreck of Titanic with 401 on one of the port side blades you can see only confirms that it's Titanic. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it but just, the, back, the, but the what, what they do is they, yeah, but they come back. Mm. See, this is when, 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 when it's an unpleasant fact. That's when they turn around and they go around in a big circle and say, no, that's a blade which was on to be fitted to a Titanic, so we put it on a, on the Olympic. And that's nonsense. Yeah. You know? they, they, they want their cake and they want to eat, eat it too. You know, in order to get the the new Olympic ready, they're taking things from the, the now Titanic to put onto it. But then... Mm -hmm when you look at the wreck and there are clearly things that indicate that that is the Titanic on the ocean floor. Oh, well, no, no, no. That they took things from the, the, what was going to be Titanic put on the was Olympic. And it's like, so what one was it? You know, were they taken from one ship and put it onto that? Or were they actually taken from that ship and put it onto this? You know, they, they're trying to have it all in order to you just can't, You can't, that's right. You can't have it all. No. Because you can say, oh, well, hang on a sec. Oh, the floor tiles or the lino or the, whatever you call it, lino, I don't know what, what you call it over, we call it lino. The colour of the tiles was different in the smoking room on Titanic as opposed to what they were on the Olympics. So why is there recovered tiles which fit the colour that was fitted to the smoking room, which is found in the debris field? What are you going to do? What do they do? Pull all, all the tiles up and then put the same tiles that they had down or lino the squares? And pattern they put, turn around and change all that over and they're changing all over certain things in the reading and writing room they're moving the magnetia um, clocks from where they were supposed to be they put it here and they change. there's no way in the world it would have been easy to build another ship if you wanted to do a, a swap let's be realistic about this you didn't have the time to make titanic into an olympic if you were going to sink one you would have made the britannic look like the olympic now see 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 this is where you start thinking you you don't have the time to do it to titanic the schedule is too tight but we can make the britannic look like the olympic then we can switch it over and then once the dust has settled we can sink the 
Olympic as the Britannic. Would have worked out well too, I suppose, during the war because Britannic sunk up there in the mine. Would have solved a problem too. But you understand what I'm saying. There was not enough time to switch all these things over. So, and there's a lot of things that come down to all of these things too. There's so many things going against it. We would need another hour yeah. and we would sit down and have to go through every one of these items and say to yourself, well, this is different, this is different, this is different. We'd be here probably all day doing this. Now, mm. I can answer questions for you. We'd say, well, why is the plates faded here? What's mm. this vent doing here? Why is that different? Or why is that little round pipe on the front funnel? Why is it higher on Titanic but it's lower on Olympic? Yeah. Why the windows? Yeah, why, why, is, why is this different? Why is that different? We'd be here all day. But that's not going to convince someone out there on TikTok no. who listens to some young girl Tell them that they've been switched to ships because their mind's not open to it. Yeah, it's like Mark Chernside. He's face. He's banging his head up against the wall with several people. I think over the configuration of this. This how many blades were on the, the center prop? Mm. Yeah, it's got yeah. four. It's got three. For you and I, we probably don't really care. Probably no one really necessarily cares. But mm. we've got to know. There's well, no way again. That that was one of the things that until three years ago I didn't know. Um, mm. Until I spent weeks during lockdown drawing a a picture of titanic's propellers rising from the water you know sli slightly inspired by the james cameron film but i took a slightly art deco approach with it and i was very yes. proud of it i was so chuffed with myself i posted it online and i got absolutely torn to shreds because how dare i put four oh, yes. blades in the central propeller and i wanted to burst into flames i actually just wanted the ground <laughs> and yeah, me because i had no idea i didn't know i just I, I didn't know and all of a sudden there were people you know they weren't saying to me oh that's a really really good drawing but the central you know they were they were lambasting me they were and it was oh, yes. it was it was quite intense but yeah, and then it gets it gets personal too yeah, yeah. It, gets and, all, uh, it becomes down on personal level. Now, after after me and Bruce done the book on the switch theory, you should have seen what I got. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. I, I mean, I was getting I was getting messages, and that, I was I received two or three death um, threats. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, over uh, like what? Like, like no, 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 no one should no, no switch theory. I'm saying That's they didn't. Insane. That because there mental. are insane people out there. That are listening to this rubbish on TikTok. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And and this comes back to what we had originally talked about prior. This is coming back to um talking about Loch Ness Monster and the Yeti mm. and a, a UFO crashing in Roswell. Mm. You can't convince people who think these things that they're not true. And yeah. so therefore, but sort of as I said, we'd be here all day and we could go through a number of these things. I know a lot, I know a lot of our friends are sitting there watching and things like that. I think we've addressed the 16 portholes, 14 portholes, which is on the port side. I think on the starboard side in the same area is exactly the same. Now let's let's move on to what they say. Oh, there's an M and a P on the wreck. Now you've seen that, haven't you? Yes, yeah. Oh, you know. If you look at the footage taken by, and I think it might have been Ralph White who was in the sub. I think it was a French expedition in their little yellow submarine. Make a good Beatles song. And I think you like the Beatles, do you? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. yeah somebody else yeah. likes the Beatles too. So so they went down in North Hill. And this was about 88, 89, somewhere around there. It might have been when Telly Savalas done that. Have you seen the Telly Savalas show? Dive no. to the Titanic and he opens the thing. You haven't seen that one? No. There again. <laughs> so, and I like Telly, love Kojak and oh, Kelly's heroes. Brilliant. But um, <laughs> but it, they went down there and what they did is that they put a little scrubbing brush or a broom on the little arm there and mm. where the port side nameplate was, they, they sort of rubbed it off to see the names. And they managed to reveal, I think, a T and an I, and I think you saw a C or something. But they didn't get it all off because something was hanging over on the port side where the name was. See? So you could do a little bit here. There's some dags hanging down here. So you go around. 
and then you take it off there. But what looks like it's in the middle there is an M and a P. And the conspiracy theorist people, they jumped on it and they say, oh, well, therefore it was Titanic. And then what they've done is they made little plates up and it was, oh, well, and a certain number of plates have fallen off and there's the original one and it's M and P. And it's nonsense. Well, it is absolute nonsense. Yeah, it is. It, it's mental. It's absolutely mental. <laughs> it's um, crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. Because, you know, the you know we're talking about even you know for you and i we know the internal structure of the ship you know we know where certain rooms were located you know for god's sake i could wake up tomorrow i could have gone back in time on titanic and i mean i'd be very inconvenienced i'd be i'd be a bit annoyed i'd actually i wouldn't be even excited I'd be like, for fuck's sake you know i'm busy i've got things to do but i would know how to get around the ship and i because in you as well we, we would know where to go to get to certain rooms but these people that believe this conspiracy it's yes. it's all about the purely the external view of the ship it's just it's just how the ship looks on the outside and yeah. one of the articles i read that was discussing it wasn't kind of defending the conspiracy but it didn't do much to debunk it i'll admit um it used the portside photographs of both Titanic and Olympics forecastles, yes. but then it used a starboard side photograph of Olympic yes. forecastle to kind of support. And I was like, that doesn't work. You can't say, oh, maybe it was the Olympic by using a photograph from the completely other side. But there was no reference of, you know, they didn't they didn't acknowledge the fact that, you know, that 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 was a completely different side of the ship. Um, but I think one thing that's important to mention is not just the the kind of visual cues of for the conspiracy, um, the the ways that you and I know that it's nonsense. Um, but I think I think it's important to acknowledge why people say it happened. You know, okay, people are saying that the ships were swapped. Great, cool, awesome. Um. We know that there were rooms in other places. We know that there were vents in other places. People can yeah. see that portholes changed. All that's yes. well and good. That's great. But why? Why did this supposedly happen? Well, they were building the ship. And the second one, which was the Titanic, um, they were making modifications based on... Um, what they'd seen and what happened on the Olympic and what will change this around. And I mean, there's no conspiracy sort of theory coming up about why Esme thought, you know, that they put cigar holders above the urinals, which is what he noticed on the Olympic, you know. Mm. I'm not too sure whether I want to go to the toilet and have a wee and have a cigar in one hand. And, but anyway, but they just, they made changes around. And if you're going to turn around and involve it, that say that, if that they've switched them over in Belfast, you're going to involve everyone who's at Harlan Wolf, including what? Lord Perry? What is he saying? Well, how would he not know about it? Whatever, you're going to blame what? Alexander Carlyle? And then uh, Tommy Andrews? Thomas Andrews? They would never have been part of this nonsense. No, no. Mm -hmm. There's just so many things, Aaron, but I think that, because we're just looking at the time, so we've been talking for an hour or something like that, and I think that if who's watching this, we can't convince them that there was no switch because their mind is focused in on something. We can only concentrate on why they think that they switched it. And the only way you and I could do that is to do a special Zoom meeting where you turn around and say, here's the photo, mm. compare the photo, here it is, whatever it is. But even if we turn around and done that, they won't watch it. Because their mm. mind will be closed. Yeah. The only the only thing, as I say, you would do if the Olympic had been so badly damaged, you would have waited until Britannic was finished, mm. and that makes sense, doesn't it? That's if you yeah, want to do that, the switch. That really you kind of switch. perked up my ears when you said that because it, funnily enough, it hadn't occurred to me that that's actually a very good rebuttal. You know, people. Anything are ignoring the fact that they didn't know World War One was coming. They 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 had no idea that that, that was a thing that was happening. Um yeah. 
interestingly, actually, and, and a, a connection with Australia, the, yeah. the, the morning Titanic sank, and potentially as it was sinking, actually, um, yes. in Australia was launched what essentially would go on to become not quite the RAF, but this idea of an air force. So there were planes that were launched in Australia that, you know, were designed and built to, you know, work in the event of some kind of combative situation. Um, and, and Jack Thayer famously, or I guess if you're, you know, aware of Titanic, you know, maybe not famously, but, you know, poignantly wrote that the world of today, the, the modern world kind of awoke with a shock on April 15th, 1912. And and it's interesting that yes, he was referring to the sink of Titanic, but this idea of, you know, the modern day is very kind of wrapped up in war. And and after Titanic sinking, it really was just war after war after war. And and the fact that as she sank in Australia, you know, they were piloting this new way of, of defense, um is 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 quite interesting, yeah. It is the other thing with the switch theory, because there's been there was two documentaries about the switch theory, and I was in one of them. Hmm. And I said to, and I don't even remember who it was, and I said to Bruce because Bruce is going to be in it. I said, look, the only way to do this is good cop, bad cop. I said, you tell them that they didn't do it. I'll put whatever evidence there is forward. Um that they could have done it. Hmm. Um, and, and then there was another one which um, when there was this fellow, he was a British fellow, and he was all talking about the conspiracy and it had um, Paddy Fenton in it. You know, Paddy Fenton. Mm, he, said your name? He, was on the, he said he was on the ship. James oh. Paddy Fenton. Okay. So you haven't heard this, have you? No. All right. It was a chap. <laughs> yeah. Okay, you didn't hadn't hadn't heard about the the Sea Scouts having one of Titanic's lifeboats either. <laughs> uh, okay, so you go. All right, so Paddy Fenton, right? right. Uh, he was a crewman on Titanic. Okay, and um, he said that Titanic didn't sink. He said it sunk because of a coal bunker fire. And he said it in the 1940s. Okay. And he also said in the 1940s and the 30s, it wasn't Titanic it sank. It was the Olympic model. Now, you haven't heard that? No. Well, there you go. And it made it into the documentary. Mm. And where Paddy Fenton had said that it was a coal bunker fire and explosion that sank the Titanic on the wreck. The, the On the starboard side, the plates are all bowed out exactly where Paddy Fenton said they would have been from an explosion in the reserve coal bunker. Hmm. And there it is. But let's, let's have a good look at Paddy Fenton, okay? I didn't know nothing about Paddy Fenton. But we've got it. We had a newspaper up here called the Northern Star. There was a fellow called um, uh, Finch. I can't remember what his name is. And he had a museum which was over in Kyogre or something. And his son, right, had told him after reading the Titanic Switch book that he worked with a sailor on a ship called the Kaliga. And he mm -hmm. said he was on the Titanic. So Frank Finch it was. So he wrote uh, in a column, a uh, letter to the editor, that my, I believe it was some, my son actually worked with a fellow who said that they'd done it. And his name was Paddy Fenton. So let's have a good look at it because I chased up Paddy Fenton and I even went to the Australian uh, Maritime Crewing um, Union to try and find out some information about him. And he did exist, but I couldn't find out what happened to him or where he was contacted. Of course, Paddy Fenton or James Fenton's name doesn't exist on any list. Mm. And I think as George B. he many years ago, we'd been talking, he said, 
Well, if he'd been on the ship, he would have come forward and claimed any 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 money. To, he would have been owing too. Yeah. So there was no claim. So what happened to Paddy Fenton? So I think there were a lot of rumours floating around, Aaron, probably in the 20s, 30s and 40s. Sailors mm. must have been talking about Titanic. I mean, if you and I were on a boat or something like that, we would be aware crossing the Atlantic. The captain or the second officer, first officer would have said, hey, guys, we're passing over where the Titanic sank. So it would have always been there, wouldn't it? It's like when you drive down the road and there'd been a really bad car accident. And every time you go past it, you would look over there and say, oh, yeah, I remember that. And I think the same thing with crossing the, the Atlantic. I mean, you would know that if you were crossing a certain area in the North Atlantic, you'd say, well, this is where Titanic went down. And that would help feed uh, the continued conversation with it. So the other thing I, I find interesting that somebody once said, um, yeah. because they pulled out the windows on B deck on Titanic and they were like all squares, squares, mm -hmm. squares, you know, which was like the Olympic hat. And somebody said to me, oh, well, they pulled them all out and they've got these irregular ones, little thin ones, and because they've got the um, state rooms in there. And they said, oh, those ones they pulled out on B deck, were they spare or surplus to the point where they turned around? and pulled top those frames and put them on A deck. Have a look at A deck, the enclosed forward area on A deck. Hmm. They look like the normal windows that came off B deck, don't they? Yeah, actually, yeah. So, so were they repurposed? So when uh, they took them off top, no, you follow what I'm saying, don't you? Uh-huh, yeah. So therefore, then, if we're going to pull all these little square windows off B deck, so you take mm. them all off and you put them down on the side on the outfitting wharf that you've got there. Somebody might have come up with the idea, well, we can repurpose these and, and put them on the on the forward end of ADEC and enclose it. Yeah. Because they're exactly the same. The, yeah, actually, yeah. Now that I think about it, they are. Now that you think about it. Mm. Yeah, you're thinking about it now, aren't you? So, oh, yeah, yes. they are the same. I mean, Christ, I've I've drawn that ship so many times that when you mention a particular part of the superstructure, I'm like, yep, I can I can picture myself yeah. drawing each bloody window, each each little window. I can see myself drawing it. I'm like, yep, I can yeah. see it. Uh -huh. so the ones yeah. they took off, that they put on a deck. That yeah, that makes sense. Um, makes sense. Going going back to what you were just saying there, because actually one of the things that, well, there were t there are two kind of things. One that I wanted to ask you, and one that was the general consensus of you know listeners and and followers of of the podcast wanted to ask. Yes, you you, you kind of said that people have been saying this since you know potentially the twenties, thirties, and it's just kind of it, it's grown arms and legs. And now it feels like we hear about it more, but really maybe we don't. It's maybe just because we have social media that it's able to spread much quicker and further. Yeah, exactly. Whereas before, it would have just been if you happen to know someone and, you know, say you go and visit someone in another country, they tell you you're not that invested in it. You're not going to go back and tell your whole town about it, you know. Whereas nowadays, millions of people can hear about it, even if they don't want to. Though, you know, I didn't want to hear about it, but I heard about it. Um, but w why why do you think, even let's just say that one man in the 1920s came up with this idea that Titanic and Olympic were switched. Why, why, why do you think anyone would need this idea or want this idea of these ships being switched? I really think um, when you look at Olympic and Titanic and you stand back from a distance and you look at them, mm. so instead of saying feet, which is the other end, say, Hey, so you like th from 300 or 400 meters. There's one over there, there's one over there, which is like, which is in a famous photo in that where the Titanic's in the dry dock in March 1912. And there's the Olympic, which is just probably where the outfitting is. I think the word is echelon. They're in echelon, which is a, na a naval word, I think is in echelon. But when you look at those two ships there, they look exactly the same. Mm. So to the, to the normal person, to the average, the average, what's the English word? Punter. To the average punter, <laughs> the average punter, when you look over there, they couldn't tell you 
Olympic type, type they look exactly the same. Four funnels, same color, painted all the same. You'd be thinking to yourself, it looks like the same two cars um, in a showroom floor mm -hmm. in a car lot. Yeah. There's one over there. That's a blue one, and that's a blue one. Um, oh, well, which one's mine? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Now, of course, we can look at the B deck, and we can look at the A deck, and, and we can look at a few other things. But for the people who are working around at Southampton and on the docks and places like that, let's forget about Harlow and Wolf. Because if you worked on these ships, you'd know which one it was. I mean, you, you would know. I mean, how, how could you finish work one day and come back on a Monday morning and the one you were working on and they say that it's Titanic and you say, well, get out of <laughs> that's, This is not the same ship. The tool, where's my tools? So that's yeah. out. So forget about Harlow and Wolf. So you can so, say, but so therefore Southampton. So if you were working at Southampton Docks um, and uh, the Olympic had been coming in for, you know, um, uh, for several months and you're looking at it, you see this huge ship up close, really it's in front of you. Um, when Titanic arrived, it would look exactly the same. You're sitting there looking at this huge ship. So you'd be thinking to yourself, it looks the same. And in Southampton, I mean, was, the area was all built up. So if you're living in the area, you might see a funnel here with a bow over here or something. Of course, the ship's going to look exactly the same because it's a very condensed area. Mm. And people are going to talk. Yeah. Because Olympics here at Southampton, or Soton, how what people like to be lazily put it, and I, I do it myself. So all of a sudden, here it is, beautiful ship, and then it goes out, and I'm not too sure what day the Olympic left. The Titanic got there. I did second, third. It was there uh, on the fourth, uh, one o'clock in the morning, tied up, whatever, so some debate about it. But anyway, they would have looked exactly the same. If you're working at the dock, are you in the area? Olympic and Titanic would have looked exactly the same. Yeah. Hmm. And Titanic was only there for what, say five days or something? Not everyone in Southampton who lived in the area would have had the opportunity to come down and see, wouldn't they? Yeah. So whether it was Titanic or Olympic, you wouldn't have known the difference because they looked exactly the same. They were the same in echelon, as the same in uh, silhouette. Yeah, yeah. They looked like, exactly the same. Like, like I said kind of previously, to, to the layman person, or as you say, the kind of the punter, they, they do just look the same. And, and they do, you know, for the most part, you know, front on. Absolutely. Um, I, I think it's interesting that with any kind of big tragedy or disaster or national kind of just like kind of disgrace, you know, you can look at the JFK assassination, you can look at 9-11, you can look at Sandy Hook, um, the Titanic sinking. It can't just be a tragedy. It has to be a conspiracy. You know, Absolutely. Sandy Hook, it, no, no kids actually died. It was crisis actors. It was staged in order to get the um, kind of gun laws repealed. When you look yes. at 9-11, it was actually just all faked in order to access Iraq for oil. When you look at JFK, yeah. it's because he was far too progressive and they just wanted him out and so they killed him. You yes. know, th there has to be a reason. And, and I just, I look at Titanic and like, what is it about Titanic that kind of has randomly kind of lumped it in with all these other disasters turned conspiracy theories? And I, I just think that potentially kind of almost kind of going back to what you said, that this began way before like the internet. This began kind of at the time when talking movies were becoming like a thing. Um, yeah. It could just be that people can't accept that bad things just happen. The bad things happen. People need a narrative. They need an, a narrative. They need a reason. They need a villain and a, a hero. And it potentially could have just been one person. It could have been like a group of people. You know, for all we know, it could have been people that worked for Harlan and Wilf. That one person kind of suggested like, oh, I bet this happened. And it kind of caught on, but they all knew it was a joke. But then one person told the wife, and then their wife told their neighbor, and the neighbor told the people at the pub, and the pub told, and it's just, yeah, and and it's, I it's I find like Aaron, yeah, if you you and I 
look, it, 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 let, let's put you and I in 1911 and we'll go back to Belfast. Mm. And we've been working at the yard there or something like that. So we go down to the local pub and we're going to have a few nice Irish whiskies. Uh, let's, uh, there's a nice uh, whiskey distillery in Ireland, uh, Kilbaggan. Mm-hmm. So we're going to, yes, Kilbaggan. So we can have a few whiskies and all of a sudden we think, Jesus, this is an ass. Um, these boats look exactly the same. I mean, if they switched them, who would really know? And then you say to your mates, oh, look at that. Oh, that could be a limpet. That could be a Titanic. No, of course it's not. And, and your thought just runs off with you. And then, of course, what happens is you take you and I and put us in 2010, and then we're watching TikTok and something, and the same thing comes up again. And you've got to look at it and say, yeah, they could have done it, you know. The killer blow for all of this, um, for Titanic, my opinion, that they didn't do it, apart from the fact that they didn't do it, you could not have convinced Captain Smith or um, mm. Rick Wild, Charles Lytola, uh, Joey Boxall, um, James Moody, all of these guys, and the chief engineer who was at um, Bell. I can't remember his first name. Joseph Bell. Joseph uh, Bell. Whatever. Joseph, Joey Bell. How would you convince? How would he not know that he's not in the engine room of Titanic the, of the Olympic? He had to have known all these other guys. How are you going to convince these guys we're going to take a boat out there? And what is the, what? What are they saying? Oh, we're going to simulate running into an iceberg. Oh, well, good luck. They're going you know, to be steering it all over the place. I mean, here's Robert Hitchens. Here's Bob Hitchens. I'll go here this way. There's one over there. We'll go and see if we can hit it. And then there's a thought of saying that Titanic was hit by another ship and by an icebreaker. And then one minute it's going to Halifax and, and then it's not going to Halifax and the Marconi device is broken down and starting. We, we're just going around and around and around. There's no way if I was, say, Captain Smith and you were um, Wild, Henry Wild, is it? Okay. Um, chief, chief engineer, a uh, chief, uh, chief officer. Um, and Bruce says, my is going to come and say to me and you, oh, well, I think you sort of guessed we switched the ship. So I said, oh, yeah, well, I sort of, I, I gathered that, Brucey. <laughs> I know it's the Olympic. I mean, you know, we're not that stupid. No, what's, uh, what's, what's going on? What's going on here? Oh, we're going to take it out and sink it. Are you going to go out and sink it? Well, it's not enough lifeboats. Oh, we'll take it out and sink it because JP Morgan's all, he, all the people um, that he doesn't like are on the boat, so we can get rid of all of them. And when yep. the ship's sinking, it's men and women only, so we won't let them on, so they'll die. So JP gets more money. Yeah. Does it all make sense? Did, would Would you, as a sixty five year old man, turn around and be part of something like that? You wouldn't do it, would you? No, it's just it's it's ludicrous. It's and you know people point to uh, JP Morgan not being on the ship as evidence that supports the conspiracy theory, but I mean. There were so many people that had tickets to be on the ship that for whether it was something as bizarre as a premonition of a sinking that made them not go, yeah. or whether it was just a delayed train or illness, you know, there were so many reasons why s- certain people didn't go on the ship. But the, the hyper focus on JP Morgan because he's JP Morgan and because it just it fits too well, you know, and because, like you said, the Federal Reserve, you know, blah, 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 that. That's a whole it's, other thing. Um, yeah. yeah. And the it's saying just... that um, JP Morgan paid paid for um, paid for the three ships. Mm. My understanding is that um, White Star Line end up mortgaging their whole fleet to raise the money. I think they had 12 or 13 ships. So they mortgaged the whole thing, which gave them the money for the Olympic class. So White Star Line funded themselves. Titanic was not over insured it was actually underinsured wasn't fully insured by Lloyd's um it, it was um White Star Line took out um uh, job lots uh, insurance job lots from all different insurance companies because you know not no one was prepared to stick their neck out for you know two million bucks two million pounds mm-hmm. so you had all these different ones and then they're saying when the ship sank I mean White Star uh White Star Line um double their money and got it back and none of this makes any sense no well 
you know, we, we've said it a few times that the people that believe this won't go and do their own research. And, I, you know, I I did, you know, for this discussion, you know, because I wanted to at least sound like I knew what I was talking about, you know, next to you. But the, when it came to the, the payout, you know, Lloyds of London, like that was a, a hell of a payout for them. You know, the, the ship cost the equivalent today of, I believe, close to like eight million pound to make. And they had to pay out at the time, only the pay out was like five million. So they they didn't even make enough to cover the the loss, and they would have known that. So even yeah, something that's true. like it does it doesn't make sense. But these it's these things that aren't mentioned in the conspiracy theory videos. And if you were to be, if you weren't Steve Hall right now, and you were the the lassie, whoever it was on TikTok that was spouting crap <laughs> you're basically you know spraff and shite as they say in scotland um you know and i said to her okay well can you explain to me why titanic cost eight million to make in today's money but the, they knew that the payout was only five million can you please explain to me how it's gonna work how that she wouldn't have anything to say but because she's just going by sound bites and talking points she doesn't have Oops. an argument you know yeah. So I suppose because we've been talking an hour and a half, this is really interesting stuff. It's good stuff and enjoying this. So if if you and I, okay then, so okay, then we've we've been drinking our Irish whiskey in the pub and it's 1912 or something, let's call it 1911. And, <laughs> and somebody comes along and says, Listen, Aaron, listen, Steve, we think we need to get rid of the Olympic because you know the Curls banned, and we can't get our money back. And the Admiralty's been rather naughty. They're not going to give us the money, and now they want us to pay for the damage done to the HMS Hawk. We'll lose the money left, right, and center, um, left, right, and center. What we're going to do is we're going to get rid of the Olympic. Can what 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 can you do? We don't. We're not going to switch ships over. We're not going to do any of this stuff. You know? How can we get our money back, Steve Aaron? You, you you guys got some idea? I said, well, listen, whoever. Me and Aaron have got a good idea. Next time, we've got to get the Olympic to get back to Belfast. It's not, it's not hard to do. Find some excuse, whatever it was. On the way back, we said fire to it. And it burns out. It's not hard. Ship's made out of wood. Somewhere between where Southampton and Belfast, you and I go along, we pour lamp oil all over the place, throw a match on the ground, the thing catches on fire, there's no no loss of life, it burns out, and you tow the wreck back to Belfast, insurance rights it off, total loss, mm. and you get your money. Or you're going to go through all the palaver of taking it out in the middle of the Atlantic with all these people on it, Convincing everyone, you know, we'll sink it and reverse the pumps and we'll do all this doesn't make any sense, does it? No. Just burn it. Set fire to it. Set fire between Belfast and whatever. And and of course that the perfect opportunity was when it when it left Southampton because it lost the, the blade on the port side um in the Atlantic. So it's heading back to 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 Belfast, um, which was in March. I mean, just on that trip there, let's just fill it full of lamp oil and set fire to it. There's only probably, what, 80 people on the boat? No one's got to be floating around. What area's got the most wood in it? Oh, the smoking room, or where can we do the most? Set fire to the back end of the boat because that's really going to get out of control. We'll make sure that the fire hydrants ain't working. The smoke's going to get blown down into the engine room, so the boys are going to bail out. So... Everyone's going to go forward because the wind's behind us. Let's all get on the lifeboat and we'll sit there and watch it burn out and tow it back to Belfast. It's such a good point. You know, people think that, you know, some kind of insurance scam has to be really dramatic and, you know, in darkness and out of kind of view. Yeah. But it, it makes me think of the, the Maris Celeste. You know, people, a lot of people don't realise that that ship, when it was found, then went back into service as a ship, and okay, it yeah, changed. It, yeah, it changed hands a lot, and people thought it was cursed to the point where uh, a group of people that owned it ran it aground in broad daylight, 
to to claim money. Um, so you know, it didn't sink, you know, down to the bottom of the whatever waters it was in. It was still visible, um, because yeah. a lot of wrecked ships are visible. They're wrecks. You know, they're not functional ships anymore. Um, but but they never got that payout because it was apparent that it was intentional. It it didn't make sense. So whereas yeah, a fire, especially with nineteen twelve kind of forensics, they wouldn't have been able to do the kind of investigation that you can do nowadays to determine whether it was intentional or not. They they just wouldn't have had that kind of technology um or, or forensic capability. So that yeah, that's such a good point. Such a good point. Yeah. Um uh, that, yeah, so I think in that lies the answer because that's what you're going to come back with and you can say, well look we could have just set fire to it and burnt it out. We still would have got the money, would have saved all the palaver. No one would have died. You didn't, uh, you know, end up, you know, requiring Smith or any of the crew to have anything to do with it. Mm. And we would have got our money back. Yeah. Um, or worse comes to worse, let's just wait till the Britannic's finished. Because um, when they built the uh, Britannic, of course, had the different lifeboat gantries, didn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But were those gantries brought about by the loss of the Titanic? Is that why they were on there? Big... I, I, I believe so, yeah. It was, well, I mean, mo more lifeboats was a direct result of Titanic, but then it was just technological advancements. They were like, oh, we could we could do this. And it's like, okay, so it was kind of, like, it, it was, and then it just kind of grew from that, it expanded. Yeah, and something which is not often talked about um, was the um, timeline for the completion for the Britannic. Hmm. Um, why the Britannic takes so long to finish? I mean, really, when the, I'm not sure when the war kicked off or something like that, you would have thought that if they got into the Britannic, it probably would have been finished around about what, probably 2013, 2014, sort of June 2014, somewhere around there, but. I mean, by the time the war started, it wasn't even finished. So mm. um, what impact did Titanic have on the yard at Harbour Wolf? Look, we have no idea at all, Alan. So uh, it, it's, it always comes down to a few things that, that I often think about, and this is the difference, I think, between, um, you know, Steve Hall, who's 63, and yourself. Yeah. Um, and I've been around, of course, since the no internet and all this type of business and only 30 books or whatever. Mm -hmm. There's a couple of things coming to my mind. Is that um, if I could if I could go back in time, mm -hmm. um, where would you where would you where would you want to go? I mean, this is not a genie in the bottle when you get three goes at it. Let's do the whatever it is, and this is not Earl and Allen's time machine or whatever. But if you and I could go back in time and you went back and had a look at the Titanic, sure, we'd do it, wouldn't we? Yeah. If I said to you, look, I've got a time machine, as um, you want to go back and have a look at it, you'd say, yeah, let's have a look at it. And um, we'd go back to Belfast. And while we're at Belfast, we wouldn't be sitting there looking for any evidence of a switch. No. You wouldn't be doing it. Would you be going back and you're taking some nice photos, which you could end up later on selling on eBay? Yeah. Um, and you'd be taking photos of areas on the Titanic. Wouldn't be hard because you go back and you just say to Harlan, well, look, here's 30 or 40 quid, you know, me and Aaron here, we want to take some photos, or here's 30 quid, I'll go and take as many as you want. So you're going to take photos of the chart room or something and you this room and that room or whatever it was. So I'm going to take all the mystery out of it. And I think that'd be fantastic. Mm -hmm. The only other thing is that um, it'd be nice to know what happened on the night. Mm -hmm. um, and it'd be nice to be on the ship leaving Southampton because I think that, that would that'd be really nice to end that. And um, on the night, as long as we've got it to get a way to get off it, <laughs> um, mm -hmm. You'd certainly be at the front of the ship, you know, at around about 11.35, wouldn't you? And yep. you think, well, hang on a sec, you know, we know what's going to happen here and we know right up in the distance there, there's a there's a, an, an iceberg. Mm. It'd be interesting just to watch it and see how everything pays out. Yeah, so. 
It certainly would. Um, you know, it's it's funny you say eleven thirty five. So I'm working on a book, and of you know, it's like an illustrated timeline, and yeah. my plan is to do two to three drawings for every five minutes of the sinking from eleven thirty five till this the obviously the, the final the stern goes down. And then a few drawings of the Carpathia voyage, because you never see that. You never really see onboard Carpathia during the voyage to New York. Um, and I just think no. all the pub, the public space is being used for survivors to sleep in on tables and benches and shit. It would just be really interesting to see. Um, so so it's, it's really interesting that, that you say that. Um, but... Absolutely. As much as I said earlier that I'd be very inconvenienced to wake up on the Titanic, I'd, I'd be raging, I'd be furious, but it would be incredible. It, it really would. Um, and I mean, when, when I think of even like uh, Hugh Wilner, who jumped from the, I think it was the A-deck promenade into a lifeboat, uh, was it collapsible D as it went down? Um, and he wasn't thrown overboard, he wasn't shot, he wasn't whacked with an oar. He survived, um, and it, it's yeah. not something that obviously, if every man on Titanic had done that, it would have been a disaster because every lifeboat would have been swamped. No one would have survived. It would have been awful. It would have been really horrible. Um, but when I think of Titanic, when I was a child, I, 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 I think I was just gripped by the the drama of it and the the kind of the visual, the kind of sensory experience of it. But as I've gotten older, I've really thought about what would I do and yes, what did yes. the, the people do? And that's, you know, my, my artwork really focuses on the people. And and that's what's really fascinated me. Um, I see that in your artwork because I just saw a piece that you had posted up there not long ago, which seems to be it was a crewman sitting down and it's sort of the, the water's coming in. And, um, yeah, that's absolutely fantastic. Yeah, you're just doing some good stuff, mate. And I, 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 I don't really know. I, I, there's some things in in life that you really look at and you really say to yourself, you know, why do I like things? When I was a lot younger, we were making um, airfix kits and Spitfires and ME one oh nines, and mm. we were watching the Battle of Britain and things like that. That was still something, you know, it's still in my mind or something, you know, because I'm born 14 years after the end of the Second World War. That might sound quite a long time, but it's not really that long at all. No. Because my mum was there during the war and everything like that and whatever. So, um, but uh, I think that when when I look back on things, there's some things in my my eye that I look at and I think they look really nice. I like a Lancaster bomber. Mm. You know, when I look at that plane and I think to myself, it just looks right. It's meant for purpose it's built for purpose it looks like it's going to do the business and it damn looks good the b-17 i do like but they had to change it around a little bit but i like the b-17 but there are other things that you look at in life and you say to yourself now that just looks good um and of course from the 60s star trek and the original enterprise and you think to yourself, I was going to build a spaceship and I wanted people to be impressed. I'm going to have big engines on the back and I had some flashing lights, uh, you know, just to let everyone know that it really does look fast. I mean, it's like having a car and you put a spoiler on it. <laughs> uh, I'm not too sure about having the bridge right at the top where the Klingons can shoot at you. But anyway, um, but some things really look, just really look nice. And I think when you look at Titanic, mm. it just looks like a beautiful ship. And the question that often comes up, which one looked best, the Olympic or the Titanic? And I suppose that maybe we should probably finish up, probably thinking to ourselves or saying, or asking each other, which one of them do you think looked the best? And do you think Olympic looked best or do you think Titanic or do you think Britannic? I, I, I love that. We've, we've kind of began with what ship sank. Yes based on the the visual the outside of it and yeah. we've basically ended on the titanic bloody sank the real question is which ship looked better <laughs> like i love that that's 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 the real question we know titanic sank but which one yeah. looked best 
Okay, so in your opinion, which one? Personally, which one would you like? Which one would you buy? I love the the carved off closed detail. Um, on obviously both ships have it, but the Olympic because it's got the full promenade. I love the fact that Titanic has four of those little because it's got the two on the front and then it's got the one in the middle and then the one. So so I personally. That's the only thing about Titanic that seals the deal for me that it's got it breaks one up, extra... it breaks up that symmetry. Yeah, yeah, I, I love it. it. it I really it, like it. It, it. It's like anything because if you look at a human face hmm. and you look at, you know, so you look at a girl or something and you see she's walking down the face oh, down the street, you say, oh, wow, she looks very pretty, doesn't she? But if you analyze and you look at it and you think to yourself later on, if that was my wife or something, I say, oh, okay, then that's all right. Oh, I never noticed that Chris's eyes a little higher on this side and that. Or I didn't notice her ear was a little bit different. Or this, And this is where when you look at symmetry, which is like the Sphinx, mm -hmm. the Sphinx is exactly the same on the left as it's what on the right-hand side. It becomes rather mesmerising. And what you're saying is at the end, you took take an Olympic, which is completely... Everything's lovely. It's got this symmetry. It's beautiful. Every deck's the same. Da 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 da. Whatever. It's absolutely beautiful. And you've taken Titanic and all. So we'll put these screens on A deck and we'll change the arrangement of the windows on B deck. There's your beautiful girl. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. You know, understand what I'm saying? Because you can't have perfect symmetry because it just doesn't work. Mm. It's got to be a little bit different. It's got to be whatever it is, and everyone's different. So that's my opinion. If I had to pick a ship, if you asked me which one that I would have thought, I would have been thinking probably, you know, 10 or 15 years ago, I would have said, well, Olympic. But then I think if I look at Olympic today, it looks a bit dated. Mm -hmm. So I'm starting to lose my voice. It's, it's been up since 8 o'clock Sunday morning. Um, I think that if I look at Olympic, it looks a bit dated with all those open decks and, you didn't add all those open promenades. Yeah. But when you take Titanic and you add a few little changes in it, I agree with you. Mm. It gives yeah. it a little bit more panache. The only thing that I would have done to Titanic, which is what they did to uh, Britannic, which is on the stern there, where they actually put another deck there across the back there, which which enclosed that, that back sort of well deck or whatever it is. I can't remember, so my mind is starting to fade. I'm losing my voice. I think that added a beautiful feature to the ship. As yeah. for those big gantries on Britannic, I'll get rid of those. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We'd... Oh, I my, mean, I, 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 I don't like them at all. And um, I love Britannic, I, I... but they were just eyesores, absolute eyesores. They're horrible. And in the end, did it help during the sinking? I don't. I don't, I don't really know. <clears throat> Excuse me. So what we need to do, Aaron, I hope that um, people who later on, because you this is not live, I don't think it is, doesn't matter. Oh. So you're going to upload this later on. Yep. So if you can sit there and look at it, and yeah. I hope they, when they after they've watched what you and I are talking about, mm. and it's been a fly on the wall, it's been two guys just talking about the switch theory, we've laid it on the line, mm -hmm. it's what we think. Um, and of course, prove to me that they did do it. Well, good luck doing that because you're going to have to be pretty good to do it. And anything being recovered from the Titanic wreck site with 400 on it, someone told me once there was something, oh, well, maybe it was a spanner or something. Who knows? You know, of course, stuff's going to be crossed over there but within a certain period of time. But everything on the uh, Olympic, which you can buy these days, it's all got four. Uh, it's got uh, four hundred written on it. Mm -hmm. No one's fighting all that. So you have yeah. change panels, do all that type of stuff. It's very well was. Exactly. So uh, before yeah. we disappear, I suppose. Yeah. Thank everyone for tuning in, Aaron. Thank you for the opportunity. No, thank and, you. The the and, pleasure is mine. I mean it. And I think what I'll leave it with is that if I could go back in time um, to when they were building Titanic and um, 
you, you can, you're making all these panels and to go in the smoking room and things like that. Um, and you chalk on the back of it and you say, oh, 401 panel six smoking room SM, whatever it was. I think I, what I would have wrote on one of those panels when I was doing it, I would have put the information which was supposed to be there. Mm. But I would have also wrote on the bottom of it, Steve Hall was here in 1912. God bless, bless the ship. Yeah. You know, because I would I would have said Steve Hall and here I am because that would have been important to me and that's something that I would have done. I would have done on the Olympic too because, of course, I didn't know Titanic was a blessing. Yeah. And you could have turned around and done one of your drawings or something on one of the back of the pens. See? Yep. I'd have done just a full artwork on the back of one of the Grand Staircase panels. Absolutely. You could have, yeah, you could have come in on Sunday, Sunday afternoon into yeah. the panel shop when you're doing these <laughs> things, and you could have said you could have said to Patty, Hey, listen, Patty, I'm I look, I'm not I'm not I'm not getting paid. I know nothing's happening. I just want to go and check on something, and you're gonna go on one of the panels in the smoking room, the ring <laughs> room, and you're gonna turn around and you're gonna you're going to do one of those paintings or something like that or something, whatever it was, and you're going to put it up there or something like that and just smudge it out a little bit so you know later on that you'd be able to see it. Aaron was Brilliant. here. I love that. I absolutely love that. Steve, thank you so thank much you very much, Aaron. for Look, coming on. Uh, it's been a pleasure. Um, anytime, come back. And um, if uh, you want to talk about anything else, let's talk about it. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I'm open to um, I'm not, not anything. Yeah, and thank you all for listening. Um, please you, comment below or message myself on either Titanic Artist or Time to Talk Titanic um, your thoughts on this episode. And like it, share it with anyone you think would be interested or with the fellow conspiracy theorists in your life. Um, educate them educate the people that believe the switch theory because they're just wrong basically and there's other things there's more things to worry about than switching theories and faces on mars and yetis and yeah exactly we all yeah. like titanic that's why we're here <laughs> thank you and take care you take care aaron i'll uh, catch up with you soon good night everybody take care mate bye-bye thank you cheers See mate. You. bye